So, so these regional water parks, that's what I was, let me get back on subject, okay? <laughs> Armando got me off subject. <laughs> no, you didn't. Sorry, Armando. I just got your name, I didn't get anybody else's, so I'm gonna use it over and over. Or I can pick on Javier, I guess. Um, the regional water parks, again, if you can picture it, they're very, very cool. And we're gonna build five of them throughout the city. So as you can see, or as you can tell, we have a plan. You know, I talked about a vision, but a vision without a plan, you know what it is? Anybody ever hear this? What is it? It's a dream, it's a hallucination. So, so, so a, a vision without a plan that you execute, like you've been executing, you know, moving all these folks out of their dilapidated structures into new structures. I mean, you've been, like I said, doing God's work. You've been doing a lot of exceptional work. So you had a plan though, didn't you? And you were executing that plan. And your vision was, I want to move all these folks into a better life, right? So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to move the whole community into a better life. We're doing that together. With your help, hopefully with our help, we're all getting there, uh, working together towards one common vision and, and common goals that can be executed. So again, getting back to the water parks. The water parks, like I said, we have a plan. We're gonna do five of them. But we're not gonna close the other pools like we did in Irving, because there's a lady that still blogs about me and she hates my guts, because we, we closed down three pools, and one of them, she had her name on it. She was a previous uh, uh, council member. So I learned from that. So we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna close pools, at least not in the beginning, but they're not gonna be used as much. So that's gonna be something that we'll have to look at in the future, like five, seven, eight years into the future. But you gotta have a plan. You gotta be thinking, you gotta be talking about, you know, how can you morph into something different? Kind of like you. You know, you were bigger as an organization. You had to get more efficient. You had to put more money into the projects. And you've done that over time. So as an organization, as a community, we need to do that too when we morph into what we had before with these pools. And now we're going to have these water parks, which is a little bit of a difference. So the things that we added to these water parks that, ma'am, I didn't get your name, but that show that we're thinking about the kids, we're thinking about the kids in the morning and in the evening. So you can imagine if these water parks are lit. I don't mean you're lit. I mean that, that, they're, that, they're, that, that, they're, that they have lights, okay? Um, it, they're gonna have lights. So we've thought, you know, they have lights. Guess what? We could probably rent them out in the evenings, right? Not a bad idea? Probably a good idea, and put color the water as well with lights. Not color it with anything else, but color it with, with lights. The other thing we're adding to it is uh, we're going to heat the water. Interesting, huh? You know why we're going? <laughs> yeah, you're everybody like, oh. I told you we had a plan. <laughs> uh, I grew up in Lubbock. I'm from Lubbock, Texas. And Lubbock and El Paso, other than the mountains, <laughs> have a lot of similarities in terms of the weather. You don't have tornadoes, but you have that windstorm. It's a nasty storm. And, and, and in Lubbock, we had all kinds of weather. We had a lot of tornadoes, but we had a lot of dry heat. You know what happens with dry heat? When you get wet, you get cold. So you think, oh no, it's really hot, and, and you know, you're not gonna get cold. But that's one of the details that we're putting into these water parks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open them up before we open it up to the public, and people can rent them. So if you have little kids, four-year-old, five-year-olds, and you wanna have a party there, guess where you can have a party? You gotta, you gotta rent it out, but you can have a party. <clears throat> where do you take kids now that are four and five to rent something and take them to something cool? Peter, Peter Piper? <laughs> That's not bad, you know, Peter Piper. What, what else? Huh? Party halls? How much does it cost you? $500. Did you hear? $500 for party halls. Do they provide food? Right, they don't provide food, do they? So it costs you $500 just to rent a party hall. What if it costs you $500 to rent out original water park? With food? No. You food. <laughs> I like your thinking. I, I know who you work with. You work with Jerry Sushon. <laughs> You're a, you're a negotiator. He negotiates all the time. He's always negotiating, you know that? All the time. And, and the thing is, I'm smart enough to know when he's negotiating. And I really think he doesn't think that I am. <laughs> but you're always negotiating, that's good. But no, it doesn't include the food, but it's the same price. And you get more amenities. So you don't have that now, do you? 
So imagine if your kids, I don't know if they graduate from junior high, my kids did in their school, but imagine a graduation party or an end of the year party in the evening for teenagers. Pretty cool? Imagine having one of those for just you adults. You can provide your own liquor and stuff, you can do that, actually. We actually have that, yeah, exactly, she's over here. Shh. I don't know what, I don't know what that means, but I think that means a lot of fun. Uh, but do you have that amenity now? So see, I can get lost in any one of these things that I'm talking about that has a lot of cool stuff that we're bringing. And I'm not just, we're not just talking. Those things will be on the ground by 2020. Our strategic plan, if you go on the website and look it up, we have our strategic plan, it says 20 in 2020. That's one of the 20 projects, is the water parks throughout the city. Pretty cool, huh? And so these water parks will be distributed in five distinct areas throughout the city, geographically, so that it'll cover most parts of the city. Now, the two that we have closer together are the ones that have more of the, most of the population. It has about 200,000 per quads, or, or geographic areas, if you will, geographic quads that we've got lined up. As I said, we have a strong relationship with HACEP. We have a strong relationship with these groups as well. We have a strong relationship uh, in, in, uh, across the border. I know you have strong relationships throughout the city with a lot of different organizations. These are some of the things we're doing in economic development that are, are different, not necessarily new to, is new to our market, but when you have these uh, shared spaces, shared working, co-working spaces, other major cities have this, we have this in downtown as well. We're about to announce another offering like that in our libraries as well. I talked about what we've done in air service in the bridges. We did a Lean Six Sigma project that took about 20 months, it's a long time to talk about anything, you know. 20 months to talk about anything is a long time. But that yielded $32 million for us. And I was told we've never received anything like that or spent that kind of money on the bridges ever in the history of El Paso. So we, we're, we're getting a lot of firsts accomplished because we have a vision, because we have a strong plan that we're executing. Again, no different than your vision for the community, no different than the plan that you're executing here in El Paso for housing. So I said I'd get to, to downtown. One of the biggest changes that was made that were, was able to help us with downtown was the fact that we passed a state rebate law that other cities already had. We actually birthed it in, in, in Irving. And when, I, when we brought it up, when I brought it up, I was told it was a crazy idea. I was told, that's crazy, why would we do that? I was also told spray parks were crazy. Why would we do that? The summer of uh, 14, it was July of 14, I was told, Mr. Gonzalez, that's crazy. Why would we do that? We already have a plan, okay? And then they, they, they also told me, why would we do the regional water parks when we already have a plan to replace our, our old swimming pools? You know that an old swimming pool, have you been to one of the older swimming pools? It's just a rectangular block of cement with water in it. And it'd be, it'd be similar to like the house I grew up in, that the thousand square feet, we had, we had 10 people living in it, about 100 square feet per person. It's a joke, but we had about 10, we had 10 people. We had my grandfather there, my aunt, and with all the kids, my mom and dad. We had 10 people in a thousand square foot house. Why would I want to buy a brand new thousand square foot house today if I had a better plan? I mean, why wouldn't you want to build a house that maybe had better finishes? I mean, the houses you're building, don't they have, or the uh, dwellings, don't they have better finish outs than you had in the other ones? I mean, isn't that one of the biggest marketing uh, tools and, and information that you share with people? It's more efficient, right? You don't have swamp coolers in it. You know, the, you, you've got uh, better finish outs in the kitchen, right? Water, water efficiency, all these cool things that you're doing. So why would you build what you moved your people out of? Why would you do that? It's no different than why would we build more of those square pools? It, make no, it makes no sense, does it? So again, having a plan is very, very important. So having a plan for downtown was very important. 
when I first started working here the summer of 14, they had put out an RFP for all comers to submit their, their qualifications and to submit proposals for a convention center hotel. You know how many bidders we got or how many offerings we got? Anybody want to guess? Two? You said two? Anybody else? Zero. Got zero. You're really smart. We got zero. Why did we get zero? Because there was, there was no deal being offered. And when you do convention center hotels, every convention center hotel, you have to have public participation. And the reason being is because you ask for a block of rooms as a city. That's why it's called the convention center hotel, because you block rooms for the convention center, for conventions. And nobody had thought of that. And you would think, well, they should have thought of that. But in 2015, we passed that legislation for El Paso. We offered it up. I mean, like Jerry said, I knew Jerry. I talked to Jerry. I was introduced to him by a mutual friend, a uh, mutual acquaintance. And he was doing a lot of great things here. And he was telling me, you know, not every organization is doing a lot of great things. And the fact that we were not taking advantage of that as far back as 2011, I can't answer that. But whenever I started working here, that was the first thing I said, we need to get that done. So we got it done with the help of the council and the help of the state delegation. But it wasn't anything that was different from what was already in place. We were just trying to catch up to everybody else, right? So that was in large measure, or in large part, why we were able to get the Marriott Courtyard, urban, the urban Marriott Courtyard, under construction. Because the majority of, the, of those incentives came from the state, not from the city. The Camino Real, $24.5 million came from the state. 11 from the city for a 70 plus million dollar project. Kind of like what y'all did with the Blue Flame, right? No different. Taking advantage of those tax credits, historic credits, right? Well, these weren't state credit, I mean, uh, historic credits or tax credits. This was a rebate of hotel motel tax and, and sales tax. So we just needed to get as smart as what you've been doing. You've already been doing that kind of stuff in order for us to be able to build these kind of hotels. So that's what we did with the Camino, and that's what we just finished with the Plaza Hotel. We just finished the final negotiations. That, that is the reason why you're seeing a rekindling and, 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 and massive rejuvenation of downtown. That's how y'all got the blue flame done. You know, Jerry was very nice, gave us a lot of credit, but you guys did that. You know, we didn't get in the way. Because, you know, it, it falls in line with our plan. And I know some people didn't want that to get developed in downtown. But looking at the big picture and it being senior housing and some office makes more sense to have more people in downtown. So I found that kind of odd that some folks would oppose that because of how this community uh, offers uh, a helping hand and open arms to try to help those that are most vulnerable. So I found that interesting that that wasn't supported by some. But live and learn, I guess. But we've done 21 incentive agreements over the last three years. 21. Over $300 million in investment. And that grew yesterday with the Blue Flame. So we're nearing $400 million of investment in downtown. So I think, Armando, we're doing some revitalization of downtown. We're very, really focused on that, on jobs, looking at you know, how we can provide more opportunities for our kids. And again, it's all because of a strong vision and an execution of a plan. Streetcars will be operational a year from now. We'll get our first one in the next 30 to 45 days. So you'll be seeing them getting tested. They're not going to be available for riding yet, but a lot, of, a lot of people are going to be asking those kind of questions. So if you can help us share that information that they won't be available for riding for another 12 months or so, but they're going to be testing all of the vehicles over the course of time. So as you know, that San Jacinto, we completed it. We got a lot of grief over it. Uh, I inherited it, but you know, I had to own it. I had to own it. You know, you don't get to blame the previous guy or the previous lady or whoever all the time. You got to just show some leadership and just take accountability for something, whether you did it or not. You have to just own it, and it's yours now. So we owned it. Then we created Winterfest. Then we created the celebration of lights, like I don't think you've ever seen before. And, and it's going to get even better this coming December because we're actually going to open in November. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add the Sun City Lights component to it, the Paseo de las Luces. I have told staff that will be done by October 31st of 2018. So that will be finished, and we'll light it all up all the way to the border, and we're going to welcome our Mexican national 
uh, neighbors from, to the, from the south into that celebration. So that's going to be even bigger and better. If you've seen the lights at the airport, those have gotten bigger and better every year. This next year will be the third year that we're, we're doing that. So we're very proud of that. That's something that, again, how El Paso is viewed, and people write their own narrative about us, and then to flip it around, it's kind of like with San Jacinto. You know, we, people wrote that narrative. We're late, over budget, and then we just turn it upside down. And now all the, the, the people can remember is how beautiful the lights are during the holidays. These are some other investments that we've done throughout the city. Uh, the Montesillo investment, uh, we have partnered with that developer. Uh, we, we brought in Top Golf and we showed them several sites. We were the ones that negotiated that deal for them to come here and they chose that site and I think it's the best site that they could have chosen. We showed them the west side, the far east. We showed them Cohen Stadium. We showed them, we showed them the airport. We showed them that site, this site as well and they chose this one. And we can't cause them to move in certain places. We can only point and strongly emphasize. But again, that's one of the best locations for any of the top golfs in their inventory. These are, these are some other investments in downtown. Of course, you know about the ballpark. Uh, the, the, the Mills Building investment, Park Hill, Smith & Cooper. West Star. West Star is the first Class A office building that will be built from the ground up. Because I know you're going to have great office space with the blue flame, but the West Star Tower will be the first building that has been constructed from the ground up in I think 50 years. So again, that came because of the strong incentives that we have. If, if you've got a vision of what you want to create and then you have a strategic plan and you have these goals that line up in accomplishing certain objectives to realize your vision, you're able to start seeing these results come to life. And that's a good example of that, in that we were very aggressive with our incentives. And incentives, uh, really, they're, they're dollars that come from, from the project itself, not necessarily from the city. And it's no different than your tax credits and your historic credits, but it's our credits. I mean, it's our taxes that, that come off the building. If the building never gets constructed, those taxes never get realized. So when people say you're giving all this money away, you're giving money from the project that's being developed. So just, just so if you can think of it in that, in that frame of mind. So that, that one uh, here on the end, that's the Sun City Lights, that's the Paseo de las Luces. It's going to look much better than that. That's just uh, a rendering. 